Liverpool, a club known for its gig and press system, a system which gave them the Champions League and ended their 30-year wait for a league title. But every successful tactics relies on its players. And with the departure of their key figures, Liverpool faced a noticeable dip in their performance, with a shocking exit from the Champions League last season. Indecision again, did that hit the man? It doesn't matter, because it's Craig Dawson who adds to the misery of Liverpool. So Klopp had to look out for a tactic which is versatile and blend well with new faces. And after vigorous testing, Klopp has restructured Liverpool this season. He implemented concepts like box shapes and rotational triangles, and found a new way of progressing the ball forward. And using these, Liverpool have become one of the most resilient and unpredictable sides in the league. That's Alexander-Arnold, it's a lovely fist. What a ball by Nunez! Salah! It's stunning from Liverpool! So what exactly are these new tactics of Klopp this season? And how these recent signings are adapting to this? Let's find out in this video. <laughs> After the departure of Fabinho, Liverpool somewhat lacked a CDM who can single-handedly protect the central channels. So to fill that void, Klopp instructs his right back to cut inside and act as a second pivot. This results in a box structure in the midfield and grants more freedom to the number eights to be aggressive. And leveraging this inverted role, they have created an interesting build-up pattern on both the sides. And if you take close look at the pattern, it represents a thunder-like shape, where due to Liverpool's central overload, the oppositions had to narrow down their structure. This opens up clear space on the flanks, where the winger is free to receive the ball. And upon receiving, it drags the central marker towards him, creating space for the inverted fullback to be the receiver, which then again opens up wide space for the center mid to make a diagonal run to receive the final pass. So like this, they constantly create central and wide spaces to progress the ball forward. And just like City, Klopp also encourages his players to carry the ball themselves, rather than relying solely on direct passing. You might see a center back driving the ball all the way into the final third, which drags opponents out of their positions and and force them to send more markers towards the ball carrier, which excellently creates space for others to receive the pass and break the opposition's backline successfully. And with this, they have scored several last-minute goals this season as well. Here's Diogo Jota, and oh, it's brilliant from Diogo Jota! It's individual brilliance! Now let's delve into the most interesting aspect of the video, which is when they transitions into the final third. So they generally positions in a 2-3-5 shape, where the left back move a bit higher and the center mids joins the front three. And to open up the opposition's rigid defense, Liverpool employs a concept known as rotational triangles on both the flanks, where the winger, number eights, and the fullbacks keeps on interchanging positions among themselves in a fluid manner. For instance, when Salah is on the ball out wide, the center mid makes a diagonal run towards the flank. This attracts all the markers around that area towards him, creating a gap in the half spaces for Trent to make a late run and either deliver a direct cross or cut inside. Salah, runners from Gakpo, takes men away, and what a goal! Alternatively, you might also see Trent making an overlapping run on the flank, which draw attention away from Salah and this creates a clear path for Salah to cut inside and break through. So the triangle limits the opposition's ability to focus on a single player and force them to track the movements of multiple players around them, making it easier for Liverpool to find spaces. But when they're without the ball, they become even more dangerous than this, as they adopt a high-pressing approach, where the front three aggressively press the opposition's backline, aiming to block wide passes, while deliberately leaving gaps near the opposition's pivot as a trap, where the central mid are ready to press them as soon as they receive the ball. And if the ball is passed backward, Liverpool intensifies their press by pushing more players forward. This strategy forces the opposition to either play long or move wide, and when they go wide, Liverpool apply huge pressing overloads on that side, with each player closely man-marking an opponent. So this way they create multiple locking mechanisms of presses to restrict the opposition's build-up. But this season due to the absence of proper ball winners, there is no marker who guarantees to regain the ball back from a 1v1 press. This is the key reason to Liverpool's less effectiveness in pressing this season, as more teams are able to progress the ball and win these pressing back. Battles. But talking about their Gegen pressing strategy, the introduction of a box midfield has made it challenging for opponents to launch quick counterattacks through the middle, which has made the Liverpool's counter pressing even more stronger. Also, Klopp puts at least three players around the ball carrier, while the remaining ones presses all the passing options nearby. So, this way, it limits the opponent's ability to play out of the press.
process and lead them to make rushed decisions under pressure. Now let's discuss the dark side of this system, which lies when the opposition counterattack from the wing. Due to Trent's invert positionings, the right center back is forced to move wide to address this threat. This shift often leaves a gap in the half spaces, prompting the left center back to join in and cover that space, which eventually exposes the left back to defend the rest of the area. So a quick cross field pass around him can easily create a 2v1 situation for opposition to take advantage of. And to tackle this, Klopp often instructs Trent and the CDM to drop deep between the center backs. But due to their attacking mindset and lack of experience in defending, it makes them less effective in these roles. Coming inside, he's got Robinson down the line. He can deliver a smart ball and does and scores. While in the past, Fabinho used to step in as a temporary center back who provided a more solid defensive presence and assured a safety net. If they brought a player who can replicate Fabinho's role, it could significantly strengthen their defensive capabilities. And with the departure of Mane and Firmino. Liverpool's front three have struggled to convert chances into goals this season, and most of their goals are now coming from the midfield or the inverted fullbacks. So Klopp has to find a solution to make his front three contribute more, and not entirely rely on Salat to score. Now here comes the roles of each players under Klopp's new tactic. So at the back, Panate is more of a ball-playing centre-back than Van Dijk. He often uses his excellent ball-carrying skills to advance forward, disrupting the opposition's structure and creating space for his teammates. While on the right, Trent's inverted role enables him to deliver exceptional line-breaking passes from the middle and allows him to stay near the edge of the box, where he has been successful in scoring goals with his long-range shots. While the CDM is more of a deep-lying playmaker, McAllister or Endo who generally acts as number 8s are given the responsibility of a number 6. They usually likes to get forward and engage in attack, but defensively they lack the strength and ball-winning qualities like Fabinho. At center, Dominic and Jones are excellent roaming playmakers. They play a crucial role in Klopp's rotational triangles out wide, as they can interchange positions with multiple players. Also, their ability to find open spaces and retain possession in midfield is crucial for Liverpool's play. At wing, Salah and Diaz plays as an inverted wingers. With Trent moving inside, Salah often has to come back and provide width on right side, so this takes away his actual role of an inside forward and makes him as a wide winger. And up front, Liverpool has the history of playing a false nine, and Nunes does this job quite well. He's great at making himself as a passing option for others to get forward and attracting the markers towards Salah. him. Darwin Nunez, Salah! But these players can't operate without a proper instructions. So Klopp set his team mentality as attacking and instruct them to have a high tempo. This resonates well with their proactive style, with a focus more on fast transitions from defense to attack. While at defense, they play a high line with committed tackling in order to activate their intense counter-pressing strategy. And to replicate Klopp's rotational triangles, attempt long-range goals, and create space using ball-carrying method, the final third will be set as look for overlap, shoot on sight, and run at defense. Talking about passing style, they are equally skilled at both direct and long passes when needed, so it's ideal to keep it mixed. So overall, it's safe to say that despite with all these challenges, Klopp has successfully managed to restructure Liverpool and prepared them for another upward trend in the coming seasons. And similar to Klopp, Pep has also moved moved away from his traditional style and introduced a new way of building up, which is the introduction of the 4-2-5 system, where even his own goalkeeper plays as a centre-back. And he's now focusing more on ball carriers and dribblers. So why has Pep revamped his system? And how does his unusual tactics actually work? I have explained it in this video, so see you there.